Hi there, you are watching a video of shell and tube heat exchangers for industrial plants. There are different types of shell and tube heat exchangers. The most accepted classification is shown below. Shell and tube heat exchangers can be classified into natural circulation and forced circulation. Within the natural circulation classification there are vertical and short heat exchangers, basket type or film type. Within the forced circulation we can find the horizontal uh, heat exchangers and the storage type uh, shell and tube heat exchangers. Shell and tube heat exchangers are used in a large number of applications. For example, we can go from very small exchangers for temperature control, uh, in this case 25 mL diameter and 25, 24 tubes, and we can go up to a very large application for hydrocarbon heating, for example, 4 meters diameter and 4200 tubes. In order to understand the configuration of this type of equipment, it is necessary to bear in mind that there are two different fluids circulating inside the exchanger without mixing. For this reason, the equipment is divided in two circuits, tube side and shell side. Therefore, to understand the arrangement of shell and tube heat exchangers, it is essential to study the bundle arrangement and the shell configuration. The fluid flowing inside the heat transfer tubes, that belongs to the tube bundle, defines the tube side of a shell and tube heat exchanger. On the contrary, the fluid flowing inside the shell of the exchanger defines the shell side of a shell and tube heat exchanger. Depending on the many different configurations available, shell and tube heat exchangers are formed by different elements. The picture shows the main parts of a floating tube sheet type shell and tube heat exchanger, widely used in petrochemical refineries. Different design conditions require different configurations, therefore, different types of shell and tube heat exchangers. Shell and tube heat exchangers are divided into three large groups. Fixed tube sheet exchangers have two tube sheets at both ends of the tube bundle. This type is the most economical of all three types for the same pressure and temperature, of course. The advantages of this type of heat exchangers are the shell efficiency and the fact that they are more economical to fabricate. On the other hand, the disadvantage is that only chemical cleaning can be performed on the shell and this type of exchanger does not allow thermal expansion. The U-tube exchangers only have one tube sheet that supports and anchors all the U-tubes. This type of exchanger absorbs thermal expansions at low cost. The main advantages of this type of exchangers is that they allow thermal shock, in other words, uh, differential thermal gradients between the bundle and the shell. And on the other hand, uh, the fabrication of these type of exchangers is very simple. So those are the advantages. On the disadvantages part, um, we have that only chemical cleaning can be performed inside the tubes. There are also some mechanical procedures, but very limited, and also the fact that the tubes must be curved, so that is adding extra cost to the manufacturing process.
And last but not least, the floating head heat exchangers. These type of exchangers are a mixture of the two previous types. This configuration is the best option for inspection, maintenance and repair. The main advantages of this type of exchangers is that they allow thermal expansion and they also can um, allow multipass tube side configurations from 2 to maybe 12. On the disadvantage side we find higher cost of maintenance and higher fabrication cost than the YouTube type. If we move down this classification, equipment are more expensive and allow a greater differential thermal expansion between the bundle and the shell. On the other hand, as we move up this classification, exchangers require less and less maintenance and at the same time present greater water tightness. Next, the main parts of a shell and tube heat exchanger will be described. One of the main parts of a shell and tube heat exchanger is the shell. The shell is a one-piece cylindrical body. It can be a tube or a rolled metal sheet, welded if needed. It will contain the tube bundle inside and also it's worth mentioning that the fluid that bathes the outside of the tube bundle circulates through the interior of the shell. Another of the main elements of a shell and tube heat exchanger is the tube bundle. This element is formed by heat transfer tubes, tie rods and tube sheets. It is located inside the shell and the center line of this element is parallel to the center line of the shell. The tube bundle has baffles or plates which function is to support the tubes and create turbulence to guarantee the heat exchange. The tube sheet is another key element of this type of equipment. It serves as a dividing element between the flow of the shell side and the flow of the tube side. At the same time, anchors all the tubes to the bundle. The tubes pass through the tube sheet and are joined by means of mechanical expansion and or welding. The function of the stationary head is to receive the fluid that has to circulate inside the tubes, distribute it and collect it to send it out of it, that is, back to the process. And finally, the floating head. This element allows free expansion and contraction of the tube bundle due to the temperature gradient between the shell and the tube side. This element is difficult to construct, requires precision and strict machining tolerances. Floating heads increase manufacturing cost of the equipment significantly. Next, the configuration of shell and tube heat exchangers will be described. The configuration of the tube side in a shell and tube heat exchanger is defined by the tube bundle set located inside the shell. It is worth mentioning that the tube bundle it is in touch with both fluids, the tube side fluid inside the tubes and the shell side fluid bathing the tubes. That is why its configuration depends on both fluids. The tube pattern is the shape presented by the line connected the centers of the tubes in a tube sheet cross section. Among other things, the tube pattern depends on the type of fluid in the shell and the velocity of this fluid. Both 
Optima Code and HEI standard establish that the permitted tube patterns are triangular 30 degrees, rotated triangular 60 degrees, square 90 degrees, and rotated square 45 degrees. The distance between centers of two tubes according to the proposed arrangement it is called pitch. The number of tubes within the circle limiting the tubes, or CLT, will be the maximum number of tubes any particular exchanger can hold. Alternatives should be pursued according to thermal requirements. When the number of passes is bigger than one, the same amount of tubes shall be arranged on each pass partition. This condition is not always met. At most, a 3% maximum difference in the number of tubes between passes may be accepted. The arrangement of partition plates in stationary rear or floating heads determine the number of times the tube side fluid changes direction. This is the number of passes of a shell and tube heat exchanger. The shell configuration, basically type and location of baffles, depends mainly on the type of fluid and velocity. To a lesser extent, it also depends on the nozzle location on the shell. Depending on thermal requirements and depending on the type of fluid circulating inside the shell, it is possible to arrange the baffles to force the fluid to circulate in specific paths and even traveling through the shell a number of times. The most used baffle configuration in shell and tube heat exchangers is the one shown in the picture, single segmental baffles. One of the many alternatives is the double segmental baffle configuration. With respect to the previous one, this arrangement distributes the fluid to different parts of the shell. Donut and disc baffles are also used. All baffle configurations seen so far correspond to one shell pass. In other words, the fluid travels all the length of the shell only once. In some cases, um, sensible thermal gradients between the two fluids, for instance, it is required that the fluid travels the length of the shell more than once. Longitudinal baffles are used in these cases, as shown in the picture.